Astronomy is a science that observes the universe in all possible wave bands. The optical, radio, infrared, X-ray and gamma ray bands. Astron is, or has been, involved with many of these observing techniques. One of the main instruments of Astron is the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope. It's operated by Astron's Radio Observatory Division. Hidden in the forest in the province of Drenthe in the northern part of the Netherlands lies a radio telescope called the Westerbork Synthesis Radio Telescope. It was built in the late 1960s and officially opened in June 1970. The WSRT, as it's usually called, is an array of 14 parabolic dishes of 25 meter diameter. Ten of these telescopes, or dishes, are fixed to the ground at distances of 144 meters. Four telescopes, in two pairs of two, are positioned on rails and can be moved. The whole array is almost three kilometers long and is oriented along a perfect east-west line. With this telescope, important discoveries were made about the distribution and kinematics of neutral hydrogen in galaxies. Observations of many spiral galaxies with the WSRT eventually led to the discovery of the mysterious dark matter. The study of H1, neutral hydrogen, was one of the astronomical topics dear to the heart of Professor Jan Oort from Leiden Observatory. He was the intellectual and founding father of the WSRT. Using radio waves one could pierce through the dust in our galaxy and this property proved to be crucial in unraveling the structure and the rotation of our galaxy. Oort's student, Henk van der Hulst, in 1944 predicted the existence of the 21 cm line of neutral hydrogen. The study of the 21 cm line became a hallmark of Dutch H1 research for more than 60 years. After the completion of the 12 dish array in 1970, the baseline length was doubled by the addition of two more telescopes in 1979. These had to be disassembled and moved through the forest to the outer location. A second life for the WSRT started in the mid-90s. When the telescope was 25 years old, a major new upgrade was begun. The reflector mesh on the dish was improved, an operation that took several years. The most important part of the array, the receivers and the backend, were completely renewed and made much more sensitive. The WSRT was turned into a frequency flexible array through the construction of 14 multi-frequency frontends. They became fully operational in 1999. Within 30 seconds, the array could now be tuned to a different frequency. One of the first discoveries that was made with these multi-frequency frontends was the extreme intensity fluctuations of the radio emission of a distant quasar. To give the Dutch astronomical community the opportunity to experiment with low-frequency radio observations in preparation for LOFAR, a new series of receivers was built in 2004. They allowed operation at the long wavelengths of, of about 2 meters, just above the FM radio band. At these low frequencies a large part of the sky can be observed at once. The effects of interference by for example satellites and airplanes is however more severe. One of the surprising discoveries made with the Westerbock telescope is that galaxies are much bigger when observed in the 21 cm line of neutral hydrogen than they are in the optical light of stars. There is still an enormous reservoir of gas available to form stars. This is not only the case in the Andromeda galaxy, our nearest neighbor, but it's also true in NGC 6946 and NGC 2403 and many more. The WSRT has become one of the most powerful pulsar telescopes in the world. Several staff members at Astron are using the telescope to discover new pulsars and conduct accurate studies of the arrival time of their pulses. The timing accuracies they have achieved approach a fraction of a microsecond. Also in the radio continuum emission, the universe looks different. Here we see images of the Perseus cluster of galaxies, about 200 million light years from us. This is a collection of hundreds of galaxies kept together by the gravitational pull of large quantities of dark matter. Here we show on the same scale the distribution of galaxies as seen in visible light and the radio continuum emission. 
peculiar shape of the galaxy at the top right is due to the interaction of jets ejected from the nucleus with the intercluster medium. The jets are swept back by the pressure of the cluster wind and form a long trail. To improve the surveying speed of a radio telescope, we can, instead of a single feed, put a whole focal plane array in the prime focus. Once operational, in a few years' time, this will make the telescope about 15 times faster. This will give astronomers a very wide field of view to study many types of objects. Pulsars, transient radio sources, galaxies, H1 clouds and polarized radio emission. To image the large Andromeda galaxy with the Westerbork telescope would normally take up observations at up to 10 or 20 positions. With a focal plane array, this can be done in just one observation.